All right, when you're ready. All right. So this is in a bigger area. Like, I'm right-handed, all right? So I, I need to hook there, pull it around. She's trying to bash me. So you don't, you want to get it around like that. So she can't, while well, you drop that, you can, you can usually slip that leg over that wing to control it. And then you've got control of the bird. You know, so all in one motion, you know, and, and you get used to getting, these wings, I'll bash it, I'll bruise your leg, but you've got good, good control. She can't bite me. Now, if I want to do something with this bird, so she can't, if I'm going to tag her or something like that, do a tag, you want to cover her eye, so you want that a good height, and then you, you'd, put, you'd put your tag in there. We'll do, we'll do a tag in a later, later date mm. in that webbing part there. But while I've got her eyes covered, she doesn't struggle half as much, okay? That's how you cover the eyes. Then to get control of this bird again, you can take that out. You've got to hold the neck because if you let go of the neck, she's going to bite you. The only other way is if you're going to carry a fair distance and you want to get control of the wing, you can put, if you can get that head under your, under your arm there, change your position and get control of the wing. As long as she doesn't get her head out of there, You've got her and you can carry her a short distance and she won't bite you. If the head gets loose and she's aggressive goose, she's going to bite you. So you're going to have to go back to the other way where you hold it like that and get control. And the neck's the strongest part. Never pick them up by the legs. You've got a lot more. You'll break a leg before you'll ever break the neck on them. And you've got a good hold there. You're taking a bit of weight there and a bit of weight there. This is quite a heavy bird. The lighter breeds is less important, but heavy birds, you've got to support both because you don't want to overly strain the wing. Now this isn't a bad side catching yard here, say 14 by 14, but and don't overcrowd the birds because they run into the corner and one's on the bottom and that's when you get the stress. To make it a bit easier, and if you can put the birds in different pens once you've got them sorted, but otherwise, if you've got a foldable gate once you get the birds in here, you can bring your gate down and, and, and lessen your area. So now the birds, if there's not too many birds in there, and it's you don't tend to get them running, you can just reach in, bring the bird out. Depending where you keep him away from you so he can't bash her. Get that there. And I've got it. Now if you've got low fences around here, you can like put that over a fence and let it into another paddock, whichever whatever you're gonna do with the bird. Otherwise if you're drafting it off and you're leaving picking out the ones you don't want. And the last ones you've got in here, you can open the gate and let him out. So if I let him go, he's going to reach back and try and bite him. He's not happy. So then we we'll just get the last female, but you might have had, say, 10 geese in here. There'll be no more than 10 geese in this area you'd want to get in. And the younger they are, the more careful you've got to be. Under six months, if they're going to go in the legs, that's when you'll lose them. It's crucial to be very, try and keep them as calm as possible. She's a bit upset. You've got to try and be gentle with them. As gentle as you can, even though they bung on a, a stick. You've got her. Drop your hook. Turn her around. If she's not flapping, that's even better. Get her in close to your body so she can't get a wide swing. So once you get her in close, you've got more, more, less chance of her really hurting you. I mean, you always, they always get a couple of shots in if you're doing big numbers on them, but you've just got a small number. If your birds are all hand red, you can, and they're really quiet, you don't need to catch the catcher hook. The birds are just red normally, and that, the catching hook, you don't have to get as close, it doesn't upset them as much. If you've got five or six birds in there, you want to walk in, they go in all directions, you, call, you harm a lot more birds than getting the catching hook. These birds, with that catching hook, you've got a, like, you've got a good, good link. I always put a coloured tape on there, because if you drop it on the ground, I'm sure it's why you won't find that until you hit it with the mower, but if you see a bit of coloured tape, or paint it yellow, the paint's coming off now, easy to see if you drop the hook. I always, I always try and hang these hooks near a gateway. Because you wander off and forget where it is, but chances are you're going to come through that gate sometime today or the next few days, and you say, oh, there's that hook I was looking for. Leave it on the ground, you lose it, or hit it with your mower. So that's the, that's the easiest way and the most, you know, best way to handle your geese, so you don't damage them. And smaller numbers. If you, if you put 30 geese in here, you're going to lose birds with stress, and you've got to keep the numbers small. Ten in you know, a little yard, like little yard, fourteen. Ten birds, depending how flighty they are. If they're real nervous birds, you can just do them in batches of five. If they're gentle birds, you could bring in a couple more, maybe. But don't don't overdo it. It's far better just to have a couple of little short yards and bring them in. If I've got them in this lane way, I can bring you know, just ten down, have them there, have ten in here, put ten in, bring another ten ready, sort them, send them out this way, out that way. 
the more, the more yards you've got to let them go if you're going to break them into males, females, show birds, commercial birds, the better. But not everybody set up like that. But it makes a lot of difference. That's it, just better if it's high tensile. That's not high tensile because it holds its shape. You can get away with, with you know, not high tensile. If it's not high tensile, you can adjust that better once you... But if you get that right and you set it in high tensile, when you're catching the birds, if it's not high tensile, you get sway like that and they, they learn to duck. The high tensile will hold itself better and you can go in. When it's not high tensile, the bird will hit it with his wing and knock and you've got to have another go. So the less goes you have at it, the better. But not much you can do and always have that bit at the end so you can turn your hook, adjust it this way or that way. Run them along a fence line. If you're right-handed, if you're left-handed, obviously you're going to you know, run them the other way. It won't take you long once you master it, it'll work a lot better and a lot less stressful for your birds.